beginning, led by our Chief Marshals, Dr. Karen Bacon, the Mordechai D. Katz, and Dr. Monique C. Katz, Dean of the Undergraduate Faculty of Arts and Sciences of Yeshiva University, and Mr. Mark Wilf, Honorary Chairman of the Investiture Committee. of the Torah Studies Program are now entering. from all the schools and colleges of Yeshiva University are now proceeding down the aisle.
representatives from esteemed universities, including President Ronald Leibowitz of Brandeis University and President Father McShane of Fordham University. Yeshiva University deans, directors, and members of the administration are now entering.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the members of Yeshiva University's Board of Trustees who are entering the hall.
<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the investiture of Rabbi Dr. Ari Berman as the fifth president of Yeshiva University. This investiture is a shared experience. In addition to those of us in this historic auditorium, there are thousands of people participating via live stream. On this campus alone, we have overflow viewings taking place in the Fischel Beit Midrash, in the Heights Lounge, in Weisberg Commons, and along Amsterdam Avenue. We also recognize the special viewing in the Yeshurun Synagogue in Jerusalem, which we begin, which has begun with words from Michael Oren, current Knesset member and former Israeli ambassador to the United States. We'll begin by rising to join in the singing of our national anthem, led by Yeshiva University students, a cappella group, the Y Studs. Afterwards, please remain standing for the invocation. By the dawn's early light, what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free? Invocation will be delivered by Chief Rabbi Ephraim Mervis, Chief Rabbi of the United Hebrew Congregations of the Commonwealth. Mr. Chairman, President Berman, Rabbi Dr. Lamb, Richard Joel, Rashi Yeshiva, Administration and Faculty. Zeh hayom asa Hashem, nagila the nismechavo. This is the day that the Almighty has made. We shall be glad and rejoice thereon. I would like to place on record the hakarat atov, the deep indebtedness of Jewish communities around the globe to Yeshiva University for the monumental contribution you have given to all of Klal Yisrael. We celebrate with you this glorious day for world jury, the investiture of Rabbi Dr. Ari Berman, the fifth president of Yeshiva University. We pray that Akadosh Baruch Hu will shower his blessings upon you, bearing in mind your immense talent and leadership skills. Great success is within your reach. Kikarov elecha hadavar maod, 
Befiha uvilvavacha la soto. In your pursuit of the loftiest aspirations of Am Yisrael, may you be endowed with the wisdom of Shlomo HaMelech, the patience of Eov, the compassion of Aaron HaKohen, and the financial acumen of Yosef HaTzadik. May you find grace and favor in the eyes of God and people. Shetim tzachin v'seichel tov, b'nei Elohim v'adam. And under your leadership, may Yeshiva University, dedicated to the values of Torah Umada, continue through excellence in Torah, the arts, sciences, and humanities to be a veritable or la goyim, a light unto all nations. May Almighty God bring blessing and success to all your worthy endeavors. V'yishlach bracha v'atzlacha b'cholim ma'asiyadecha im kol Yisrael achecha v'nomar. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my privilege to introduce, please sit down. <laughs> it is now my privilege to introduce the chairman of the investiture committee, Mr. Mark Wilf, university trustee and benefactor. Bruchim Habaim, I first want to extend a warm welcome to all of you who have come to the storied auditorium to witness this historic event. In a university like ours, the investiture of only the fifth president in more than a century is also a sacred rite of passage. We are not only conferring academic authority upon him, we are also placing a deep trust in a man uniquely qualified to protect and promote our cherished values as he leads this institution into the world of tomorrow. Rabbi Dr. Berman, I hope the presence of our many honored guests and the support of the YU family signals to you today and for many years to come our belief in your ability to lead our institution to great success and achievements and to project the mission and the soul of Yeshiva University into an ever brighter future for its students and community members. A heartfelt and joyous welcome to all of you participating in this momentous occasion. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have the privilege of welcoming a true friend of Yeshiva University and an exceptional supporter of the State of Israel, the United States Senator from the great state of New York and Senate Minority Leader, the Honorable Charles E. Schumer, who will offer greetings. <laughs> who will offer greetings on behalf of the United States Congress. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's great to be here on such a wonderful occasion. And when I have an audience like this, distinguished but Hamisha, I like to tell a story or two, the kind of stories I cannot tell in Ogdensburg, New York, or Salt Lake City, Utah. So this is a story relating to when I was a congressman and I was redistricted into Queens. I had represented Brooklyn, but then I, Queens got part of my district, and I was on, in Forest Hills uh, on Austin Street, their main shopping street, um, not far from where Julie Berman lived, your uncle, who helped me when I ran, and um, a lady comes over to me as I'm campaigning to meet the new voters. She says, Congressman Schumer, I just read in the Queens Tribune, you're my new congressman. And I'm so glad. I said, thank you, ma'am. She said, I'd like to pay you a compliment. I w I've never met you in person, but I watch C-SPAN religiously, and you have more courage than any other member of Congress. I said to her, ma'am, that's a very tall statement. There are 435 members of Congress. I admit some of them are no goodniks, but some are very estimable people. What makes you say I have more courage than any of the other 434? She said, well, as I said, I've never met you in person, but I watch C-SPAN, 
And when you rise to your feet to speak, you're the only one who has the courage to wear a yarmulke. I said, thank you very much, ma'am. You've never, it's obvious you've never met me in person. It's not a yarmulke. <laughs> Tell you one more. I visited my father this week, and Baruch Hashem, he's 94. This is dedicated to him. My father struggled his whole life. He had a little exterminating business in Brooklyn. It was never very successful. But when he retired at age 70, my brother, who's the financially successful Schumer, bought them a house in Florida. And they would go down every winter, they'd drive down. My father had never played golf before. First time he took a golf club in his hand and he played it, they'd see many of their friends who had moved there or who wintered there. But as they got older, they were looking for things to do because he couldn't play golf anymore, his legs went bad, and their friends were passing on. Well, Florida Atlantic University lets any senior citizen enroll in any course for free. And so every Thursday at 4 o'clock, they would roll up to Florida Atlantic University, and they went to the course. They had enrolled in the course called Humor. Now, what was the course called Humor? Some erstwhile comedian who never made it in the Catskills would get up and tell jokes for 45 minutes. <laughs> Different one each week. My father never went to college. He said, gee, college is pretty easy. I should have gone. <laughs> But they'd call me with their favorite joke. And this is one of them. Mrs. Goldfarb is brought before the judge. And the judge rolls his eyes and says, Mrs. Goldfarb, you're back. Yes, Your Honor, I'm back. And what did you steal this time, Mrs. Goldfarb? Your Honor, I stole a can of peaches from the supermarket down the road. Well, the judge is clearly exasperated. He says, look, Mrs. Goldfarb, I know you're a kleptomaniac. And you know it's an illness. And I know you can't help yourself, and I know you could easily afford a can of peaches. But Mrs. Goldfarb, this is the 17th time you've been brought before me this, for shoplifting already this year, and it's only March. I have no choice. I have to sentence you to some time in jail. Now, how many peaches were in the can, Mrs. Goldfarb? Your Honor, there were four peaches in the can. She said, well, then I, he said, the judge says, well, then I have no choice. I am going to sentence you to four nights in jail, one for each peach. He's about to bang the gavel and pronounce sentence when a gentleman in the middle of the courtroom gets up all agitated. Your Honor, Your Honor, he says, may it please the court. I'm her husband. She also stole a can of peas. <laughs> okay. I could go on like this for a long time, but we have more important things to do. As you can imagine, I missed my true profession, or at least the one I wanted to be if I had talent. Anyway. In all seriousness, it is such an honor to be here uh, this morning at the beginning of a new chapter for Yeshiva University. Today is a joyous occasion. We welcome a new leader, Dr. Ari Berman, and reflect on how far this great university has come. From humble beginnings, Yeshiva University has risen to become the premier Jewish undergraduate university and a world-renowned postgraduate research university. For more than a century, Yeshiva has focused on Torah Umada, the powerful combination of a world-class secular education that is anchored in the values and teachings of Torah. As Dr. Berman reminded us when he accepted this post, without flour, there is no Torah, but without Torah, there is no flour. And people wonder why the Jews have done so well in America. To me, it's something embodied by this great institution, the combination of the American culture and the Jewish culture, one of the most powerful the world has ever witnessed. The American culture of entrepreneurialism and opportunity and achievement, the Jewish culture of family, of tzedakah, and above all, of Torah. And when those two are put together, as they are in this great institution, something very powerful, very wonderful, emerges. To truly, this is a place where the ancient teachings become modern lessons, where the old and new commingle, where students can become both more deeply Jewish and more deeply committed to the world around them. It's a place where the best and the brightest can come and learn how to apply their learning for the betterment of themselves and others to Tikkun Olam, the repairing of the world. 
That's why it's such a privilege to be here today as Dr. Berman is introduced as the fifth president of this storied institution, a place where the joy of knowledge and its expression is celebrated each and every day. Yeshiva is the intellectual and spiritual heart of the modern Orthodox movement. It's where the people of the book come to hit the books. And nobody understands this better than Dr. Berman, who has spent his life and career thinking about the future of orthodoxy in the United States and in Eretz Yisrael. Today marks the beginning of a new exciting chapter in yeshiva's history. Thanks to President Joel's steady guidance and leadership, yeshiva is now poised for an even brighter future under Dr. Berman. This institution is not just a gift to the Jewish community in New York City, but also to our state our country, and the world. And I know, we all know, that it is in very fine hands with Dr. Berman. He's a visionary leader with the passion and perspective to lead Yeshiva University forward in a new age. Perhaps it is fitting that this ceremony is so close to Rosh Hashanah, a holiday for celebrating all things new. As many of you know, Dr. Berman is a native son of Queens, almost as good as being from Brooklyn. And so it is my pleasure to welcome you, your wife, Anita, and your five children back home to the place where you grew up and studied. To Dr. Berman, to the entire yeshiva communi community, continued success, Hatzlacha. Thank you, Senator Schumer. It is now my pleasure to call upon Miriam Gillis, Vice Dean and the Paul R. Verkeil Chair in Public Law at the, Ber at the Benjamin N. Cardozo School of Law at Yeshiva University. Vice Dean Gillis will offer special greetings from the faculty and then introduce a video presentation welcoming President Berman on behalf of the university's academic community. Professor Gillis. Good morning. Uh, it is my honor to be with you today on this important day in the life of Yeshiva University and to offer congratulations to President Berman from our distinguished faculty, uh, the Cardozo uh, faculty, many of whom are here today. Um, each member of this vibrant community arrived here at Yeshiva University uh, taking a distinct path. Um, I came here from Harvard College and Yale Law School, but soon, as soon as I arrived, or very nearly as soon as I arrived, nearly 20 years ago, um, this became my home. Um, and how could it not? Uh, Yeshiva has provided amazing and inspiring colleagues, uh, talented students, uh, an intellectual atmosphere brimming with curiosity. Um, this is a wonderful place and I love it here. Uh, this is an institution of great tradition and great promise, both of which we celebrate today as President Berman uh, leads us into the next chapter. Uh, now please turn your attention to the screen for words of welcome from other faculty members, some of our exceptional faculty throughout the university. Thank you. On behalf of the Sai Sim School of Business and with pride in my five children who collectively have 11 degrees from the university, I welcome you to Yeshiva University. The students are bright, diverse, they're exciting. Our students are committed, creative, intelligent problem solvers 
who care very much not only about advancing their own learning and their own contribution, but think about how they can make a difference um, within Kalisrael, within our country, within our world. At the CAT School, we're proud to be part of YU's Path to the Future with our innovative academic programs. So one of the great things about Furkov in particular is that we're in the Bronx and our clinic has been able to serve the local community in the Bronx for many, many years. We really take ourselves here to be a law school that can produce students with immense talents, immense riches, intellectual commitments, philosophical commitments, who nonetheless see themselves as having to roll up their sleeves and make the world a better place. The day-to-day -day work is what drives my passion, mentoring students and doing research. It's a blessing to work amongst colleagues who also share that dedication to teaching and the passion for their varied and diverse research interests. My passion for Yeshiva University is driven by my love for Jewish education and my desire to contribute to the students of tomorrow and to the YU of tomorrow. I'm thrilled to convey a Birkat Mazal Tov, a special congratulations to Rabbi Dr. Ari Berman on his assuming the post of uh, the presidency of Yeshiva University. One of the great values of both Torah and social work is to see the dignity and worth of every individual. And while YU is a diverse place with a multiplicity of opinions, the more that we can see the value of what each of our students bring to the table, the more that we allow their brilliance to shine. We, the faculty at Yeshiva College, look forward to working together with you to explore new opportunities for the university and then to continue being the leaders in the educational enterprise. So I wish him uh, that he should continue mechayel al continue to grow, continue to develop. Uh, we very much look forward to working together with him, Lahagdil Torah Lahadira, for the sake of the Jewish community, for the sake of the yeshiva, and for the sake of society. Yeshiva students are its finest ambassadors, carrying with them values, talents, knowledge, and commitment to their faith that together will make for a better world. Greetings on behalf of the student body will be given by Gesella Levin, sophomore class president and student at Stern College for Women. I come from a family where my mother and my father both political refugees from the former Soviet Union, encouraged me and my four sisters to use our innate spirituality to go further in achieving a deeper connection and understanding of Judaism. I grew up with immense pride for our Judaic roots and relatives who stood tall to defend them, coming to YU to not only become educated in Jewish history and Torah, but also more specifically explore my own family's culture and history from a place where Judaism lived on an anti-Semitic terrain. Today, thankful to the Mechina program and the wise and encouraging leadership of YU, especially Shoshana Schechter and Rabbi Hadjioff, I stand here completely immersed in this warm and accepting community that treasures every person's individuality and respects each voice. Because when a person comes to Yeshiva University, they find their voice. On behalf of my fellow students, I thank all of you for making this an institution fueled by a mission that motivates all of us to step out of our comfort zones to learn and to grow. Zionism runs in my blood, and being able to learn in a Jewish university where I never have to justify why is truly something incredible. Please now turn your attention to the screens for heartfelt words of welcome from our student body. Dr. Berman, we welcome you to Yeshiva University. We look forward to partnering with you to create a better tomorrow today. New leadership brings new vision, and your vision is one that inspires us. You challenge us to move history forward. No simple task. Fortunately, there are incredible resources here at Yeshiva University. If you ever need help with writing a speech, appointments are available at the Writing Center from 9 to 5. We will work with you to face the challenges of the world as only Yeshiva University can. Our Jewish tradition and values always remain at the heart of the movement. 
you look to the past as the blueprint for the future. Which empowers us to face the challenges of the modern world. So welcome, Dr. Berman. Our future has never looked so bright. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, the Yeshiva University a cappella group, the Y Studs.
group that just performed for us is one of countless examples of the outstanding quality of our students. It is now my pleasure to ask Mr. Moschel Strauss, Chairman of the Board of Trustees for Yeshiva University, to please join me at the podium. Thank you. Before beginning my remarks, I would like to take this opportunity 
to thank all those in the administration who work very hard and diligently to arrange and coordinate this magnificent ceremony. <laughs> additionally, additionally, I would like to especially acknowledge my fellow members of the University Board of Trustees and the Board's Presidential Selection Committee for their efforts in the selection process. And finally, a thank you to our esteemed member of the board, Mark Wolf, for serving as chairman of this investiture ceremony. <laughs> On a day like today, where we have uh, great pomp and ceremony and great excitement, I think we would also be remiss if we don't remember those victims of Hurricane Harvey, the people in Houston, and those people in the southeastern United States who are today standing in front of Hurricane Irma, and I think we should just have them in our thoughts and our prayers. Today is a momentous day in the history of Yeshiva University, and I am thrilled to stand here with Rabbi Dr. Ari Berman as he takes his place alongside four distinguished predecessors who nobly led our university as presidents. And it is a great honor and pleasure to greet our presidents emeriti, Rabbi Dr. Norman Lamb and President Richard Joel. <laughs> who join us at today's ceremony with an eye toward the future and a profound recognition of the past, we have joined together to celebrate the investiture of Yeshiva University's fifth president, Dr. Berman. An investiture is the formal inauguration of the university president and represents an historic moment in the lifetime of the institution. It is not only a celebration of a new president, but a celebration of our unique institution. Behind us is a rich past suffused with tradition and core values that empower our movement. Before us, lies the future, a boundless potential for growth and service to humanity. To fully appreciate this moment, we must reflect on how far we have come. At our founding in 1886, we were a yeshiva on the Lower East Side of Manhattan that offered a small secular curriculum to new immigrants. Since then, we have built four undergraduate institutions, over one dozen graduate programs, two high schools, and a world-class smicha program, and we have produced thousands of leaders who make significant contributions to the world and drive history forward. Our students passionately dream of changing the world, and as alumni become shapers of society and inspirers of humanity. These young women and men are enriched by their faith and empowered by a profound sense of duty. It is from this sturdy foundation that we embark on a new journey. Rabbi Dr. Ari Berman is uniquely qualified to lead our institution forward, holding four YU degrees and having studied under some of the great rabbinic leaders and academic thinkers in modern history. Dr. Berman's commitment to Jewish scholarship and leadership is profoundly ingrained in his vision for Yeshiva University. In the few short months since he formally took office, Dr. Berman has already made an impression on us. We are captivated by his ideas, stirred by his vision, and confident in his ability to usher Yeshiva University to new levels of productivity and influence. It is my honor to present Rabbi Dr. Ari Berman, fifth president of Yeshiva University with the Yeshiva University Charter. Thank you, Chairman Strauss. In becoming the new president of Yeshiva University, Dr. Berman receives two charters, 
that of Yeshiva University, and that of the Rabbi Isaac Elhanan Theological Seminary, two entities that together create an institution unique among others. Rabbi Joel Schreiber, Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Rabbi Isaac Elhanan Theological Seminary, will now present its charter to President Berman. Rabbi Schreiber. Ladies and gentlemen, Rosha Yeshiva, honored guests, faculty, students, and friends. It's a sincere honor and privilege to represent the Rabbi Isaac Elchanan Theological Seminary, Yeshiva's Rabbeinu Yitzhak Elchanan, the founding institution of Yeshiva University. For over a century, Reitz has served as North America's leading center for Torah study and rabbinical training providing an unparalleled educational experience in the classic mold of the great yeshiva. Rooted in tradition, Reitz has developed an innovative curriculum and rich programming to prepare our mesmachim to meet the challenges and demands of our times. Our beloved, our beloved yeshiva has trained nearly 3,000 of the world's most distinguished rabbis and scholars and teachers. And it is more vibrant today than in any time in its long history. A visit to our Beit Midrash at 9 a.m. or 10 p.m. will attest to this. Under Rabbi Berman's leadership, we look forward to training the leaders of tomorrow. And into his hands, we place a great jewel in the crown of Yeshiva University. Today, we are all witness to an historical event as we celebrate the investiture of a president who is a graduate of our high school, our college, our kolel olyon with honors, and a recipient of smicha from our beloved Reitz, both inherits and carries forward the values and traditions of our beloved yeshiva and university. Therefore, I am doubly honored to present Rabbi Dr. Ari Berman, fifth president of Yeshiva University, with the charter of the Rabbi Isaac Elchanan Theological Seminary with our heartfelt wishes for success. We now come to the moment when our new president will be given a time-honored symbol of the gravity and inspirational nature of the office. On behalf of Yeshiva University, its faculty, students, alumni, rabbinic leadership, and dedicated supporters, I say to you, Rabbi Dr. Ari Berman, welcome Welcome home to Yeshiva University. We look forward with great hope to your tenure leading our incomparable institution. The president's medallion, which he will be presented, is worn during ceremonial occasions for the university as a symbol of leadership towards the fulfillment of the mission set forth by YU, by its founders and leaders who have come before you. Here for the presentation are Dr. Henry Crisell and Mr. Maury Weiss, Chairman Emeriti of the Yeshiva University Board of Trustees, and Dr. Norman Lamb and President Richard M. Joel, Presidents Emeriti. Dr. Crisell, Mr. Weiss, Dr. Lamb, President Joel, will you please place the medallion on President Berman?
It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce Rabbi Dr. Jacob J. Schachter, University Professor of Jewish History and Jewish Thought and Senior Scholar at the Center for the Jewish Future, Yeshiva University, who will introduce Rabbi Dr. Ari Berman. Thank you very much, Dr. Batman. Haidu la Hashem Kitov Kiliolam Chasto. We express our gratitude to God for God is good, for his kindness is everlasting. It is a great, great honor for me to have been invited to present and to introduce the new president of Yeshiva University my beloved friend and my beloved colleague, Rabbi Dr. Ari Berman, at this most important, impressive, and special occasion in his life and in the life of our great institution. And I want to do so by references to texts and to images that are found in various biblical and rabbinic sources the foundational documents of Jewish life and Jewish learning and Jewish living that occupy a central place in the core identity of our university. The Bible tells us that when Moses descended from Mount Sinai, holding in his hands the second set of tablets, that his face exuded a striking aura Exodus chapter 34, verse 29, the skin of his face was radiant. In Hebrew, ki karan or panav. And again, in the very next verse, and Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, and behold, the skin of his face had become radiant. The rabbis in the Midrash and rabbinic literature were curious to determine the source of this radiance. In Hebrew and then in English, Mehechon Notal Moshe Karnehod. From where did these rays come? Today we celebrate a new chapter in the history of our extraordinary university, and we welcome to its roster of great transformative leaders a man of great learning, great depth great thoughtfulness, great vision, and great sensitivity. And today we also ask, what is the source of radiance that blesses our most precious and exceptional institution? And what is the source of radiance that blesses our new most precious and most exceptional president? The rabbi suggested three answers, each of which describes not only an important event in the life of Moses, but also speaks to the uniqueness and to the greatness of Yeshiva University and of its, of our new leader. In Hebrew and then in English, Raboseinu Omrim Min Hama'ora. Our rabbis taught from the cave. The end of the previous chapter, the Bible informs us that Moses wanted to behold the presence of God, but God denied his wish. I will put you in a cleft in the rock, said God. My presence will pass by. You will see my back, but my face cannot be seen. The radiance of Moses comes first from the solitude of being alone, from the experience of contemplating privately and personally the presence of God. Who else was with Moses in the cave? No one. Moses was in the cave all by himself. For us as well, it is obvious that for all human beings, relationships and focusing on the other 
are centrally important. Of course they are. But we can only bring into a relationship, into an encounter with the other, who we are. And who we are begins with us alone in the privacy and in the solitude of our own personal and individual lives. A special radiance comes from the moments that we're alone, all by ourselves, comfortable with ourselves, contemplating our lives and our place in this world all by ourselves, freed from the requirements and conventions of social interaction, listening intently not to others, but to ourselves, free to roam in the endlessness of our own personal and private and individual imaginations. And this is true, of course, for an institution of higher learning as well. As a university, we know we know that the state of being in solitude is the hallmark experience of every student, of every successful student. Sitting in the library, toiling in the laboratory, studying in the dormitory, and just thinking. Thinking about themselves and what they envision for their future. Thinking by themselves. And in our university, Yeshiva University, there is also primarily the experience of learning Torah, pouring over a Talmudic passage deep in thought, in the Beit Midrash, in the study hall, sometimes in pairs, but very often by ourselves. This is the greatness of any university. This is the special greatness of our yeshiva university. Of course, students need to engage the world, goes without saying. But if we are able to engage the world successfully, it's only because we're prepared to engage ourselves successfully. And that begins by shaping our identities in solitude and in aloneness in those private spaces that nurture us, and in particular in the solitude of our own souls. And this marks the greatness of the new president, whom we have all come today to celebrate. A greatness that was forged in the libraries and in the Bate Midrash or study halls of this very institution, whose teachers in high school in college, in rabbinical school, and in graduate school, in this institution, trained you, taught you, inspired you to reach the greatness that you have, Baruch Hashem, thank God, achieved. And there were, Rabbi Berman, other places of solitude for you. The Beit Midrash of Yeshivat Haaretzion, so centrally formative for you and the library of the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. And I also remember very well the morning that you brought me to your personal place of solitude, to your parents' apartment in Jerusalem. Were you surrounded by books? Where you spent years studying and more years than researching and writing your extraordinary doctoral dissertation? Radiance comes for our university. Radiance comes for our new president, Minha Ma'ora, from the quiet and the solitude of the cave. The second answer, Mehechon Notal Moshe Karne Hod, where did the radiance come from in Hebrew and then in English? Rabbi Brachia Omer Min Haluchos, they came from the very tablets themselves. The radiance emerged from the tablets. Orkan shel luchos shishot fachim verach van gimel. The length of the tablets were six so-called hand breaths, let's say two feet, and the width was one foot. V'haya Moshe machzik bebeis tfachim, v'hakadosh baruch hu bebeis tfachim. 
Moshe Rabbeinu was holding on to the bottom, the bottom two, the bottom third, and the Rabboni Shalolam, God is holding on to the top third. And that leaves Beis Tfachim Revach Be'emtza, the middle third. Misham Notal Moshe. Karneho, the radiance emerged from specifically the middle third. It seems to me that the radiance that we seek in our own personal lives cannot come, I believe, from the top third of the tablets. That is God's arena. God occupies, God is holding on to that section. That area is reserved for the divine. It is too holy, it is too godly, it is too otherworldly, it is too sacred, it is is too luminous, it's too hallowed for us as human beings to serve as a source of radiance. And I also believe that the radiance for us as human beings can't come ultimately from the bottom third. That area is too earthly, it's too physical, it's too mundane, it's too material, it's too secular, it's too temporal to serve for us as a source of radiance. I suggest that the radiance for us comes from the middle third, the part that is neither heaven nor earth, but in fact the part that is both heaven and earth. Radiance for us comes from the effort to take earth and bring it a little bit closer to heaven, and to take the heaven and bring it a little bit closer to earth, to take the mundane of the earth and infuse it with the sacredness of heaven, and to take the holiness of the divine and bring it a little bit closer to us on earth from here, from the intersection of heaven and earth will come our radiance. And herein, I believe, lies the mission and the greatness, specifically, of Yeshiva University. Is this not exactly the mission that defines us as both a yeshiva and a university? We appreciate the earth. We revere the heaven. And we see them both as intimately connected to one another. The divine word and the divine message informing deeply in meaningful, profoundly meaningful ways the world as we live it, day by day and year by year. And this marks as well the greatness of the new president whom we have come today to celebrate a greatness that was achieved through a lifetime of effort to bring earth closer to heaven and to bring heaven closer to earth. As a student leader in our institution who was chosen to represent his peers on the occasion of their Chag Hasmicha on the day that they all received rabbinic ordination and he spoke from this podium in this room. As a teacher of Talmud in our great institution, as the spiritual leader of one of the most prestigious congregations in our country, and as a highly respected intellectual whose scholarship utilizes the most rigorous academic methodologies to uncover new meanings in ancient, medieval, and modern Jewish texts. And then finally, Hebrew and then in English, Mehecha Natal Moshe Karne Hod. What was the source of the radiance of Moshe, Rabbi Yehuda, Barab Nachman Omer, Rabbi Judah, the son of Nachman, said, Kishemoshe Kosav Esatora Nishtair Bakomos Kima. When Moses was finished writing the Torah, there was a little bit ink left in his quill. The Heviro al Rosho, and the ink went onto his fingertips and he mopped his brow. Umisham Natal Moshe, Karne Hod, and from there emanated his radiance. In the entire history of humanity, who wrote more than Moses? Moses wrote the most important book in the history of the world, the Bible, the book that serves as the foundational document of holy scriptures not only for Jews 
but for Christians and Muslims as well. Moses wrote the most important book ever, and yet when he was finished, there was more to write. There was more ink left in the quill to compose yet another chapter to his own book of life and to the book of life of humanity. And is this not what we celebrate today? Four presidents in about 100 years, President Revel, President Belkin, Zichronam Livracha, may their memories be for a besom. Yabadl ben Chaim Lachayim, President Lamb, and President Joel, may they live long and continued productive lives. They have written glorious chapters in the history of our great and beloved institution, but there is more ink left in the quill. There is more to write, and we stand today on the cusp of a glorious new chapter that will be written by our new visionary leader and guide, President Berman. Rabbi Dr. Ari Berman has himself already written beautiful chapters in his own Sefer HaChaim, in his own book of life, as a transformative leader, as a teacher, as an author, as a spiritual guide, as a shaper of human lives, as a son, as a husband, as a father, as a son-in-law, as a sibling, as a nephew, as a relative, as a colleague, as a mentor, and as a friend. But there is more ink left. There's a lot, a lot of ink left. As Rabbi Berman is poised now to write another chapter in what we know will be an incredibly thoughtful and meaningful contribution, not only to his own personal book of life, but a chapter from which will shine his radiance on this university and on the Jewish people. And so in introducing my, my chaver Ahavas Nefesh, my most beloved friend, Rabbi Dr. Ari Berman is the fifth president of Yeshiva University. I want to conclude by adapting a prayer that is intoned in synagogues across the world on the day of Simchat Torah, on the day that we celebrate the completion of an annual cycle of public Torah readings. As the congregation calls forth the individual honored with its completion in Hebrew and in English. Merishus Hakel Hagodol Hagibor Vahanora, with the permission of the great and mighty and awesome God, and with the full confidence and trust of the Board of Trustees, administration, faculty, and students of our university. May it, build the will, may it be the will of God. That the Rabboni Shalom, that God should bestow life and kindness and prominence and exaltedness to Rabbi Dr. Ari Berman. La'amtso, levorcho, legadlo, betalmo To strengthen him and to bless him and make him great in the study of Torah and in the knowledge of worldly wisdom. Ledorsho lechayim lahadro levaado bachabura. To seek him out for life, to glorify him and to firmly establish him as a great leader of our community and of world Jewry. Lizakoso lechayoso, letakso betekesora. To grant him merit, to grant him life and to adorn him with light. Le corvo, le rachmo, le shamro, be called Tsara To draw him near and to show him mercy and to protect him from all distress and trouble. Amod, amod, amod. Morenu harav arye le ben rav tuvia visara rezel. Arise, Arise, arise. Rebari, the son of Teddy and Rosalie Berman, please welcome 
the fifth president of Yeshiva University, Rabbi Dr. Ari Berman. Thank you, Rabbi Mori, Rabbi Schachter, for your incredibly moving and generous words. Your mentorship and friendship has long been a source of great bracha, of blessing, and inspiration to me. And I am so honored to share this podium with you on this special day. Chairman Moshe Strauss, Members of the Board of Trustees of Yeshiva University, Rabbi Joel Schreiber, members of the Board of Trustees of the Rabbi Isaac Elchanan Theological Seminary, past presidents Dr. Norman Lamb and President Richard Joel, Roshay Yeshiva, rabbis, faculty, and deans, our honorary chairman, Mr. Mark Wilf, Distinguished dignitaries, centers, and ambassadors, presidents, and representatives of the broader university community, respected leaders of our administration, professionals and staff, dear alumni, friends and supporters, and most especially, our beloved students. It is deeply humbling to stand here today in this hallowed hall. This hall through which the voices of our past continue to echo across the generations. The voices of our early presidents, Dr. Bernard Revel and Dr. Samuel Belkin, and those of the great scholars and sages who have lectured from this pulpit, most notably our revered teacher of blessed memory, Rabbi Joseph B. Soloveitchik. As we embark on this next phase of Yeshiva University's illustrious history, I am fully conscious of the fact that we are only here today because of the incredible work and sacrifice of so many leaders who have come before us. Whatever success we hope to achieve in shaping our future will be due to the fact that we are standing on the shoulders of giants. And I begin my talk today by asking you to join me in showing recognition and appreciation to the third and fourth presidents of Yeshiva University, Dr. Norman Lamb and President Richard Joel. I first stepped into this room when I was 13 years old as a student of the Marsha Stern Talmudical Academy. Since that moment, I have been inspired and nourished by Yeshiva University. My studies, high school, college, graduate school, ordination, post-ordination, my early teaching career all occurred at Yeshiva University. Even my wife, Anita, I met my wife when I was a senior in high school on the MTA Central blind date event. (Laughter) 
intellectually, spiritually, and socially. I am a product of this very special institution. Most new presidents of universities need to learn the story of their institution to understand their narrative and their purpose. But I do not need to read a history book to understand Yeshiva University. It is in my heart and it is in my soul. As it is in the heart and soul of so many of you who are sitting here today and so many people who are friends and partners throughout the world. We know instinctively what Yeshiva University is and what it is meant to be. Yet interestingly, it's not always so easy to articulate. Before I officially started as president in June, I spent three months living on campus, commuting back and forth from Israel. When I moved out after graduating college in 1991, I have to admit that I never thought that 26 years later I would move back into the morgue dorm. <laughs> but life is full of surprises. During this time, I had the opportunity to speak intensively and meaningfully with board members, alumni, and supporters, as well as the faculty, administration, and professional staff of each of our schools, and spend much quality time with our students. And in most of our meetings, I asked the same question. What does Yeshiva University stand for? Perhaps unsurprisingly, there are many different answers. And often at times, there was no answer at all. And this is a crucial question for us. Yeshiva University is, of course, an institution it is campuses, buildings, and students. But at its core, Yeshiva University is an idea. And it is this idea that gives us strength and positions us to be the educational, intellectual epicenter of a large global movement. And before I outline our direction for the future of the institution, in the first part of this talk, I need to address the question of Yeshiva University as an idea. What is Yeshiva University. What does it stand for? In my mind, there are five values that personify Yeshiva University, which I would call the five Torot, or the five central teachings of our institution. The first is Torat Emet. We believe in truth. We believe that God gave the Torah to Moses at Mount Sinai we believe that in the Torah there are eternal values, not subject to the vagaries and vicissitudes of history. It is this pursuit of truth that animates our intense study of Torah during the day and deep into the night, which in turn deepens our relationship with God. But we also believe that our goal is not simply to sit, study, and live in some ivory tower, that we must be fully engaged in the world and responsible to the world. We do not just believe in Torah Demet, but also Torah Chaim, that our truths and values must live in the world. Who are our graduates? They are rabbis and Jewish educators. They are lawyers and doctors, accountants and financial analysts, social workers and psychologists, mothers and fathers, community leaders, and leaders of industry, all of whom are out in the world acting daily as productive citizens of society. And we are uniquely qualified to raise engaged Jewish citizens for whom Judaism is vibrant and essential to their lives. Many of our students come to campus with a full day school education. Some of our students come from public school with little to no previous Jewish education. Here in Yeshiva University, our students find friends for life and often even soulmates and partners for life. Here in Yeshiva University, our students have the opportunity not to just learn about Judaism, but to experience Judaism, to appreciate that Shabbat is not just something we keep, it is something we treasure, and that living a life of faith adds great meaning and joy to one's life. Moreover, at this moment in time, as cultures shift and moral intuitions inevitably adjust, 
All parents know how difficult it is to help their children navigate the tension between tradition and an ever-increasingly complex world. Yeshiva University, located at the nexus between tradition and pioneering, provides the students of the next generation with the tools of critical critique and self-reflection so they can not only weather the storms and tempests of contemporary moral discourse, but also leave here both rooted and nimble, anchored in our values and equipped with the language and sophistication necessary to succeed as leaders in the world of tomorrow. By offering in one institution a comprehensive, integrated educational program that produces the Jewish leaders of the next generations, who are firmly committed forward-focused, engaged in the world, and pillars of society, Yeshiva University is the world's premier Jewish educational institution. Why do I feel like Marco Rubio? But Yeshiva University is not just for its Jewish students. We are also proud to include a large non-Jewish population in our graduate programs. And this message applies to you as well. The educational fossi of Torah Umada is based on Maimonides' directive to accept the truth from whatever source it comes. We know that there are great truths to be discovered in the study of the human mind, the physical world, literature, legal interpretation, and more. Our belief in the higher purpose of education is true for all of humanity. In addition, Torah Chaim requires everyone to be engaged in the project of applying these values and truths to the world. And we look to all of our faculty and intellectual leaders to guide us in this effort. As such, by utilizing our vast interdisciplinary resources, Yeshiva University is uniquely positioned to address the most pressing moral issues of the day. In an era in which there's a breakdown of civil and civic discourse, we stand proud as educators, thought leaders, and moral voices for our generation. These are our first two values, Torah Emet and Torah Chaim. But Yeshiva University does not only believe in truth, it also believes in humanity. Our tradition teaches us that each individual is created in God's divine image and that is a sacred task for each individual to hone and develop their unique talents and skills. In addition, we are charged with the obligation to use these unique gifts in the service of others, to care for our fellow human beings, to reach out to them in thoughtfulness, kindness, and sensitivity. These two values, humanity and compassion, are our next two Torot, Torah Adam and Torah Chesed. One of the aspects of Yeshiva University that simply amazed me when I was walking around the campuses in the spring is how these two values manifest themselves in each of our schools. For example, in Cardozo, Professor Jocelyn Getkin Kestenbaum leads the Ferenz Human Rights and Atrocity Prevention Clinic, which fights against human rights violations and genocides around the world. Dr. Bill Salton heads the Pardes Clinic of the Furkoff School of Psychology, which provides low-cost, high-quality psychological treatment for a Bronx population that would otherwise not be able to afford it. The Wurzweiler School of Social Work is launching a new initiative of mental health clinics, which will help people from all walks of life cope with life stress issues. When I was visiting the Albert Einstein College of Medicine with Dr. Ed Burns, we encountered a group of scientists sitting around the table, and I was introduced to them as super scientists. And that was amazing. I've never met super scientists before. So I asked them, what do you do? What, are, what is the research of super scientists? And each shared with me their work on some matter crucial to the betterment of humanity. One was a leader in the fight against AIDS, another the Zika virus, a third breast cancer. And this spirit not only exists in our graduate schools, but in our undergraduate schools as well. I was walking in the library one night, and I encountered two Yeshiva University undergraduate students wearing Yeshiva University t-shirts. I asked them, from where are they coming? And they said, the START Science Program. What is the START Science Program? 
It's a program where over 100 Yeshiva University undergraduate students go every week to the local Manhattan public schools to teach the children science and technology. Now this was amazing to me, but it was only later that I discovered that it was a Yeshiva University undergraduate student seven years ago that actually launched this initiative. And this project has subsequently spread to chapters in countries across the world. And this is emblematic of our student body, as hundreds of our students participate in these kinds of programs throughout the academic year, channeling their unique talents into extraordinary acts of kindness. Just last week, our Student Life Department initiated student-led missions to Houston to help our fellow citizens recover from Harvey within minutes. Our sign-up sheet had over 100 students volunteering to go. And this is what we do. At Yeshiva University, we teach our students to fight for justice, to fight for the underprivileged, to fight against violence, and to fight against disease. But most of all, at Yeshiva University, we teach our students to fight against indifference. The values of Torah Adam and Torah Chesed pervade our entire university, fusing a lofty sense of human dignity with an inspiring commitment to compassion. These are our first four principles. Torah that is true, Torah that's alive, a belief in human capacity, and the need to reach out to others. The fifth principle is Torah Tzion, the Torah of redemption. Torah Zion, of course, relates to the project of building the modern state of Israel. And this is very important to us as proud Zionists. We are proud Zionists. We certainly encourage students to move to Israel, and we encourage those who live outside of Israel to devote their time and resources to help Israel further its role as a shining light to humanity. But it's also much more than that, because return to Israel and Jewish theology is in and of itself part of a much greater narrative. Torah Zion tells us that we are not accidents of history, nor simply participants in history, but we are drivers of history. Torah Zion requires us to understand that as human beings, we all have one common overarching goal, and that is to redeem the world and transform it for the better. To birth the world suffused by justice, goodness, prosperity, and transcendence. If as Martin Luther King Jr. proclaimed, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice, then Tarazion charges with the task of moving history forward. This directive applies to all of humanity. And at this moment in time, more than at any other moment in the entire scope of Jewish history, the Jewish people are capable of partnering with the full breadth of humanity to move history forward. Let me share with you a personal story that illustrates this point. My wife's grandmother, Bubby, is an extraordinary woman who survived the Holocaust by evading the Nazis, hiding in caves, forests, and cemeteries. She was born in Poland and had a large family, including her brother Pinchas, to whom she was very close. Her childhood sweetheart Shlomo eventually became her husband, and together they lived a relatively quiet life in Poland. But then the Nazis invaded. They entered their town and gathered and killed all of the Jews. Bubby managed to escape with her husband Shlomo and a few of their nephews and nieces, but no one else in their large family was as fortunate. She never left her husband's side. And together, they managed to evade the Germans and made their way to Romania. Following the war, they left Europe and went to Cuba. And after the rise of Castro, they fled once again, this time to New York. Fast forward the story by a couple of decades. And one day, Bubby received a phone call from a friend of hers. Sila, she said, you need to sit down. I have something astounding to tell you. I just returned from a trip to the Soviet Union. And your brother Pinchas, he is alive. 
You ran east. He escaped west. You each thought the other was dead, but Pinchas is alive. Bobby immediately wrote to Pinchas. They communicated, but they never met one another, for Pinchas died soon after. But Pinchas had a daughter named Gala, and Gala married Vladimir. And they had a son that they named Pinchas after, after their father. When the Iron Curtain fell, they all made Aliyah and moved to Israel. Shortly thereafter, Anita and I were studying in Yeshiva University Center in Israel. And at the end of that year, Anita gave birth to our first son, whom we named Shlomo, after her grandfather, who had recently passed away. I still remember the scene when Bubby came to Israel for the bris. She was sitting with her new great-grandson Shlomo on her lap when in came a woman who carried a clear family resemblance. It was her niece Gala, whom she had never previously met. And with Gala came a little boy named Pinchas. And when Pinchas ran over to see the baby, once again Bubby was surrounded by Pinchas and Shlomo. You see, they thought that they could kill us. They thought that they could remove us from the earth. But Pinchas and Shlomo were alive again. And this time they connected with each other in Jerusalem, the capital of the modern Jewish state of Israel. Bubby's life represents the dramatic story of the Jewish people in the modern era, a story of an indomitable spirit able to transcend destruction and to rebuild the lost world. And it is my great joy at this point to pause, pause for a moment and acknowledge the presence of a woman who's over 100 years old, Bli Ayin Hara, who is here with us today celebrating the investiture of her grandson. Ladies and gentlemen, my Bubby. To me, this story highlights the reality of the Jewish world today, as it provides a stark contrast with the Jewish world of yesterday. The prophet Ezekiel foretells a wondrous future in which the dried bones of Israel are brought back to life. But for us living today, we know that this is no dream. It describes our reality. Pinchas and Shlomo, once left for dead, have now returned in a new generation. And look at the world that they face today. It is an era that is simply unprecedented in Jewish history. We live in an era both miraculous and wondrous. The Jewish people are no longer lost in exile, but have once again returned to their homeland. Torah study is open and accessible throughout the world. Where once we might have looked at our neighbors and saw only persecutors, today we may look at them and see potential partners. And this presents us not only with great opportunities, but also great responsibilities. Rabbi Soloveitchik, in 1956, in this very room, from this pulpit, some of you were in that room on Yom Atzmaut when he said, kol dodi dofeik, that the voice of God is metaphorically calling to us in our era knocking at our door. He has placed us in this incredible time, and he beckons us to respond. Yeshiva University represents the kinds of thinkers and dreamers who have always believed in embracing history and its opportunities, now more than ever before. It is time to think bigger, to think beyond our individual selves, to move history forward, to spread positive values to the world, and to fight for peace and prosperity for all of humanity and with all of humanity. Torah Emet, Torah Chaim, 
Torah Adam, Torah Chesed, and Torah Zion. Truth, life, humanity, compassion, and redemption. These are the five Torot that differentiate us. They are our identity. They root us deeply within a structured value system while providing moral guidance and direction in living our lives. They propel us to de develop our talents and skills while directing us to reach outwards and connect to others in kindness. And they inspire us with a grand historic purpose to make a difference and impact the world. This is what we believe Judaism is. This is what it represents. This is what God wants from all of us. This is not just about modern orthodoxy or even orthodoxy. These are our messages to the Jewish people and to the world at large. This is who we are. This is our philosophy of life. And now that we've discussed the idea of Yeshiva University, we can focus on outlining the future of Yeshiva University as an institution. Once we've established who we are, we can now lay out where we are going. And I have to tell you that the future of Yeshiva University as an institution is bright and it is exciting. When Yeshiva was founded in the early 20th century, it met the needs of an Orthodox Jewish immigrant population with limited higher education possibilities. Over the generations, our specific form and structure has shifted depending on the times, needs, and circumstances. But the core mission has always remained the same. At this point, the world has changed greatly, but our task of educating the next generation of students and future leaders has not changed. It has just shifted to be in sync with our new realities. Today, perhaps more than ever before, there's a need to raise generations of students who are both deeply rooted and forward focused. And Yeshiva University will continue to look at it into the future to open up new worlds for them. And I say this specifically in respect to three areas in which we'll be looking to expand. Number one, new industries. We will continue to excel at educating our students in the areas of law and medicine, accounting and finance, social work and psychology, education and scholarship. But as the global economy evolves, we'll also create new opportunities for our students in the areas of STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, as well as in the health fields. The marketplace of tomorrow will feature high demand for graduates trained in coding, data analytics, quantitative analytical skills, as well as those with entrepreneurial experience. And we will prepare our students with the skill sets necessary to succeed in this new reality. Number two, new markets of students. And our graduate and undergraduate programs will be diversifying our offerings and utilizing the latest technological innovations allowing for greater accessibility to attract new student populations both in the United States and internationally. Moreover, we will actively seek to attract students who represent the values of our institution, who are role models of our five Torot, including students who show a propensity and passion for their Torah studies who display extraordinary capabilities in areas that create knowledge like in science and technology, or young social entrepreneurs who stand out for the communal contributions, or those who have shown the courage of their convictions to respond to the historical opportunities of our era. For example, by creating scholarships for students who after studying for a year in Israel, continue their stay there by volunteering for Sheirut Lumi National Service or volunteering to become members of Tzal, soldiers in the Israeli army, or students who volunteered to join the American Armed Forces. We already have a significant number of these students in our ranks, and we will work to attract even more of such people in the years ahead, as these are the young men and women we wish to showcase in our community as role models and future leaders. Number three, new educational pathways. We conceptualize Yeshiva University as a single interconnected network instead of a collection of separate schools. As such, new connections between our graduate schools and new pipelines between our undergraduate and graduate programs like the Einstein College of Medicine, the Cardozo School of Law, and the newly developed CAT School will enable our students to complete their studies here market ready and poised for immediate success. In addition, our tens of thousands of alumni and friends are a crucial part of our network and will play an important role in our new educational models as connectors who will help place our students at summer positions or advance internships in their college 
and graduate school years. Moreover, we're looking to partner with graduate schools of other stellar institutions in their areas of expertise. One manifestation of all of these points will be our new connections with Israel. As we know, Israel is no longer simply a charity case for diaspora Jews, but is now an economic powerhouse and major resource, specifically in the area of innovation. Over the past few months, we've been working to formulate partnerships with universities in Israel. I have met with a number of presidents of universities in Israel. Our provost flew to Israel with our general counsel and met with their, uh, with their parallels in those universities. And I'm excited to report that just last week, we reached agreements with Bar Ilan University and the Hebrew University to create bridge programs in our institutions so that a YU student who earns a BA in computer science can complete her or his studies with a master's degree at Bar Ilan or the Hebrew University in such areas as data science, cybersecurity, and information technology. Through the assistance of our alumni, this program will include high-level internships in the startup and high-tech industries in Israel. We've been working closely with Israel's education ministry and government on this project, and they are providing us with significant support because they see Yeshiva University as their natural partners. There will be more announcements like these in the future. But my point now is that we will continue to leverage our close ties with Israel to create these kinds of pipelines so that our students will receive the best training and the skill sets necessary to succeed in the marketplace of the future and the world of tomorrow. But Israel, <laughs> but Israel is just the beginning. The global economy is evolving and emerging markets in places like East Asia and India are growing in importance. We already have a relationship with a number of universities in Israel and China and have over 30 Chinese students enrolled in our CAT school. And we will be looking to expand further. In addition to growing our tuition base, these efforts will allow us to spread Jewish values and ideas across the world, help shape future global partners and ambassadors for Israel and Jewish community, and enable our students to develop a worldwide network that will be crucial for their success in the future new industries, new markets of students, new educational pathways. But most importantly, all of these innovative and exciting initiatives will be advanced within the context of the five Torot. Since its founding, Yeshiva University has looked to open new worlds for its constituencies, placing them within the framework of our moral and religious ideals. Tomorrow's Yeshiva University will continue in that effort. Our differential will always be our Torot, our values and teachings, our sense of rootedness together with our drive to engage the world, directing the development of our own special skills in the service of others with the overarching grand purpose to move history forward and impact the world. And as we move into the next era of our history, we will apply our core principles to our current circumstances, and all of this in service to God. We live in a rapidly changing world. Technology, medicine, education, and communications are progressing and shifting in fundamental ways. This presents daunting challenges, but also extraordinary opportunities for humanity. Armed with the 3,000-year-old tradition of wisdom, Yeshiva University's mission is to guide our students and broader society in seizing these opportunities and transforming our world of tomorrow for the better. We will dedicate ourselves to empowering morally mature, market-ready graduates with the skill sets for lifelong success, endowing them both with the will and the wherewithal to make a historic, significant impact on an ever-changing world. This is the future for Yeshiva University. I will close with one, uh, one final story. Last week, I spent Shabbat at our Barron campus with our undergraduate women. And in a talk at the end of Shabbat, I mentioned to our students 
how important it is for us to come together as one united whole. That in a time in which competition and self-focus are the underpinnings of the society in which we live, our student body must exemplify the value of supporting one another and rooting for each other's success. And I mentioned to our students that I am rooting for them, that I am rooting for each of them to succeed in life. And then one woman in the crowd shouted out, Rabbi, we are rooting for you. I was really touched by that. And I want to tell you that this is the feeling that I've been experiencing both from inside and outside our university. Over the last number of months, I've been visiting many communities in the country and beyond. And the overwhelming feeling that I've walked away with is how many people are rooting for us to succeed. I have repeatedly encountered a clear appreciation of the crucial importance of Yeshiva University of the necessity for Yeshiva University to live up to its own ideals, to raise the next generations of leaders, and to serve as not only the premier Jewish higher educational institution, but also the spiritual and intellectual epicenter of a robust global movement that unites the international Jewish community together with all of our partners and friends in, the de in its dedication to promoting the moral and material betterment of human society. On and off campus, there is a great feeling about this moment and a great excitement for our future. To all of you who have long been part of the Yeshiva University community, who have been nurtured by this institution, who deeply understand the enormous potential that lies within our mission, who wish Yeshiva University not only to grow and expand, but to rise and become the place it was always meant to be, and for all those who are new to us, who are meeting Yeshiva University for the first time, who identify with our values, who see the importance of such an institution for the Jewish community and the broader society, now is the time to get involved. The participation of each and every one of you will make a real difference, strengthening and energizing our renewed sense of purpose. For all of you sitting here today, and for all of our friends who are listening throughout the world, now is the time to come together. Join us in our journey. Be a part of history as we maximize our potential, write a new chapter in the Jewish story, and work to make a lasting impact on the history of all of humanity. Thank you, President Berman, for your touching and inspiring words. Please be seated. Mr. President, honored guests, Ladies and gentlemen, the investiture ceremony is now concluded. Will the audience please stand for the recessional? Prior to the recessional, we will all sing Hatikva, which will, um, which will presently begin. After Hatikva, we invite those present 
and all our friends all across the university and in the area to join us at the Invest Fest, the festival we are hosting outside on Amsterdam Avenue in honor of this day. Thank you for being part of this, this wonderful day. Ladies and gentlemen, Hatikva will be sung by the Y Studs. Hey. 